Well, good morning, everybody. As Bill mentioned, my name is Matt Mendez. I'm the Vice President of Operational and Future Energy at INI Power Systems. The primary objective I'd like to talk to you about today is how INI is providing disruptive and innovative solutions to successfully bridge warfighter operational energy capability gaps. Next slide, please. What we'll be looking at today, uh, for those of you unfamiliar, brief company overview. I want to take a minute to hit on what exactly are the operational energy mandates? What do we mean when we say successfully bridging operational energy capability gaps? Identifying that gap, can you go back, please? Uh, how we look at things from an INI perspective, an example which we have over here of our 28 uh, VDC 500 watt rough packable flex fuel generator, and uh, most importantly, transitioning it. It's great to have something in the lab, but at the end of the day, if we're not getting into the hands of the warfighters, we're not doing ourselves a service. Next slide. Okay, so about I and I, small business based out of Morrisville, North Carolina. Uh, what we do and why we do it, directly related. Solving operational energy pain points, solving warfighter pain points. How do we do that? Easier said than done. We'll right size solutions scalable solutions and again we'll have uh, we have our family of small tactical electric power generators ranging from 500 watts to 5 kW and uh, we'll be available all day is uh, you, if you'd like to see those next slide so the operational energy mandates anyone who's in the operational energy business is you know constantly hear the phrase single fuel forward initiative reducing JPA consumption that is often uh, the the first area that's looked at, two key ways. First off, solar. Solar is great when it's available, when it's not nighttime, when it's not adverse weather conditions, when you're not operating in a jungle canopy where solar is ineffective. In that situation, you are not accomplishing the third objective there, which is enhancing combat and mission effectiveness. The second one, batteries. Again, batteries are great. You're reducing your JPA consumption. However, Batteries are heavy, there's a logistical footprint involved, and you're not lightening the load. So uh, I would offer that while there, there's a lot of good efforts to reduce JPA consumption, there's not enough of an effort, and this is where we look at it from an I&I &I standpoint from a holistic approach. It's not just reducing JPA consumption, it's also lightening the load, it's also enhancing combat mission effectiveness. How do you do that? 100% power insurance, regardless of your AOR, regardless of your fuel available in unimproved and remote environments. Next slide. Okay, the gap itself. Uh, a lot on this slide, I just wanted to hit on the, the, the high points here. Uh, first time in FY12, renewable batteries took over primary batteries. The good news is technology and gear for the warfighter is getting more sophisticated. We're enhancing our capabilities. However, that all requires power. It all requires battery charging. The term right size in a DOD inventory, 2KW, 3KW, 5KW diesel generators, big, several hundred pounds, uh, skid mounted, not ideal for dismounted and squad operations. Uh, so a lot of us have seen, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan, if you're at a FOB or a forward operating base, you may or may not have power, but it's not right, right size. If you're ch charging or powering a 300 watt battery charger with a 2k with a 3k with a 10k with a 15k wtqg you're going to have maintenance failures you're going to be burning through a whole lot of jpa and you're not accomplishing your dod mission objectives so that's where a right size solution if you only need 300 watts right size it and make sure it's compatible on jpa and that's the innovation and solution that ini is offering next slide so I've hit a lot on uh, innovation. Again, all this is from an I&I &I perspective. We look at things in two different ways. First type of innovation is what we refer to as a technology innovation. Lots of good stuff, lots of good ideas come from this. However, the, the investor or whoever is backing it, whether it be a lab, uh, type, some type of R&D facility, if they're paying for it, they're gonna dictate what they want out of it, which again is good, but it doesn't necessarily solve the warfighter pain point which is that's where we look at it from a different perspective. Uh, technology aside, what is the real pain point of the warfighter? It's dismounted operations, remote AORs, and I've got to have a reliable power source. That's the capability gap innovation, and that's what we provide. 
kind of a uh, little bit of a good background, and uh, so we're not speaking out of school here. We're small business. We essentially lived in uh, the proverbial valley of death, if you will, for 10 years with fuel cells. Again, that is that technology innovation. Great stuff. Quiet. However, proprietary parts, not compatible with JP8. This particular technology is as called a RMSC, Reform Methanol Fuel Cell, which requires a specific 6733 methanol water blend. Great when you're here in the States. When you're operating in a remote AOR, if you don't have that blend, you don't have power for your fuel cell, you're not charging anything, you're hard down, and uh, that power insurance is not there. Uh, another thing, custom electronics. That's 300 watts, uh, pictured there on the right, the fuel cell, 300 watts, about $30,000, 35 pounds, incompatible with JP8 single fuel, uh, that proprietary methanol blend that I mentioned. We sold about 20 of them. Put things in perspective, uh, at least we got good feedback from the government, fortunately. So uh, we, we knew where to gauge ourselves from a price point standpoint. Uh, they wanted to pay about 5,000. So I'm not a math major, but uh, 30,000 a fuel cell, government wants to pay five as a small business shipping 25,000 out the door. That wasn't a viable business move. Level reset, 2011. That gets back to that capability gap innovation. That gets back to solving the pain point. $5,000 price point. JP8, small aluminum engine, right size. And just kind of an apples to uh, oranges comparison that you may see there. I, I mentioned we sold about 20 fuel cells in 10 years. 10 years in development. Our flex fuel generator, one year in development. Over 2,000 systems in the past, you know, 18 months. Multiple program of record down selects. So uh, this was huge from us from a small business standpoint. It was validation. It was recognition that we were touching the operators' pain points and we were hitting a need that they need to have required that a fuel cell could not do. Taking that initial down select uh, and the rapid equipping force, huge in, in helping a small business and meeting those warfighter requirements. Uh, we, we, we pride ourselves in right sizing solutions and we have our 1K over there, uh, 1,000 watts, good stuff for 300 watt generator, but the ref came to us and said, how can you even get that lighter? How can you right size that even better? So we had a couple different spirals. Our first spiral was just validate a 500 watt proof of concept on JP8, 20 pounds. We did that. Then we took it to the next step. Next slide, please. Second spiral, great, you guys got JP8, you got 20 pounds. I want it lighter. 15 pounds, and that's what we have available over there. The other unique thing, and back to 100% power insurance, this is the first capability of its kind in the DOD inventory. A generator this small, this reliable, agnostic fuel architecture, 500 watts, 15 pounds, with a straight 28 VDC capability. It releases and removes you and removes the constraints of solar. Next slide. All right, where we're going. Uh, again, good on the ref. I, I love the 20 pounds. I love the 15 pounds. I want it even smaller. I want a ruck packable. And that's currently what we're uh, in progress with right now to get a 10 pound ruck packable, dismounted, reliable 100% power solution into the hands of the warfighter. Next slide. And in concluding, uh, again, lots of good ideas here. However, and this is also uh, something I alluded to in the, in the very beginning, if it's just hanging out in the lab and it's not getting into the hands of the warfighter, the transition isn't there, what good is it? And that's where, again, even if you also uh, refer back to the fuel cell versus the flex fuel generator slide, it was up there. 20 and 10 years versus 2,018 months. That's transitioning. That is getting it out there. That is a down select program of record win and past performance to make sure that we're getting the right gear into the right people's hands to solve their pain points. That's all I have. Any questions for me? Yeah, it's four-stroke internal combustion engine. Question was a uh, little bit about the motor. Uh, that's a great thing. It's a COTS commercial off the shelf, commercial off the shelf Yamaha generator. It comes into I and I a gasoline-only 
four-stroke internal combustion engine. I've probably seen these at Walmart or your Home Depots. Gasoline only. Come into I&I, &I, we get the secret sauce on them. They go out the door, agnostic fuel architecture, JPA compatible, any fuel. Spark plug, changing your oil. So it also relieves your maintenance burden. So any Jenny mech is uh, really going to have a, a much easier life. Anything else? Right. Thank you. Thank you, man.